a pleasant afternoon to all of you future mathematics teachers, our BSE 3B students. Welcome to another discussion on SEM 15, which is the assessment and evaluation in mathematics. And today, we will be discussing the unit 4 of our module, which is the interaction between assessment, instruction, and curriculum. But before that, let us first have the overview of this module. The measurement of student learning through assessment is important because it provides useful feedback to both instructors and students about the extent to which students are successfully meeting course learning objectives. As a future mathematics teacher, you have to learn how to assess students' outcomes accordingly. Happy learning, future mathematicians! The objectives of this discussion this afternoon are the following. Number one, select and evaluate materials and resources, including of technology. Number two, develop math lessons with different learning outcomes on comprehension, analytical, creative, and applied skills. And number three, plan logically sequenced lessons that are appropriate to the needs of mathematics students. A vision of mathematics assessment. Assessment is the means by which we determine what students know and can do. It tells teachers, students, parents, and policy makers something about what students have learned, the mathematical terms they recognize and can use, the procedures they can carry out, the kind of mathematical thinking they do, the concepts they understand, and the problems they can formulate and solve. It provides information that can be used to award grades, to evaluate a curriculum, or to decide whether to review fractions. So yung assessment, napakahalaga nito sa atin bilang mga teachers because this is our basis of giving grades to our students, giving reflection to our students at the end of every quarter or even at the end of every session in a day. Ginagamit din ang assessment to improve the curriculum. Kasi kung walang assessment, walang magiging basihan para ma-improve ang isang curriculum. Hindi po pwede na naisipan lang ng mga policy makers na magbago o mag-shift ng curriculum from the basic education curriculum to the uh, K-12 curriculum, hindi po pwedeng ganun lang. Kailangan ay mayroon silang basihan. And one of the uh, best uh, one of the best basis para magpalit o mag-improve ng curriculum is the assessment na ginawa. And then, assessment can help convince the public and educators that change is needed in the short run and that the efforts to change mathematics education are worthwhile in the long run. Conversely, it can, uh, it can thwart attempts at change. Assessment that is out of synchronization with curriculum and instruction gives the wrong signals to all those concerned with education. So, dapat daw ang assessment synchronized sa curriculum at sa instruction. Hindi po pwede na magkakaiba sila ng goals. Pag sinabi natin synchronized, iisa yung kanilang galaw, iisa yung kanilang objectives, iisa yung kanilang uh, gustong mangyari. That is the reason why kung may synchronization itong tatlo na, na ito, ang assessment, instruction, at curriculum, nagiging successful ang mathematics education. Mathematics assessments are roughly divided into two categories. We have the internal assessment and external assessment. Internal assessments provide information about student performance to teachers for making instructional decisions. These assessments may be for high or low stakes, but they exert their chief influence within the walls of the classroom. Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin internal as assessment, ito yung nangyayari within the classroom. At yung internal as assessment ay ginagawa natin yan 
uh, para ma-improve yung ating instruction. Like for example, nakita mo that uh, there are lots of students upon assessment na hindi nakasunod doon sa klase kasi medyo mababa yung kanilang mga nakukuhang scores. So pwede kang magkaroon ng improvement o pwede kang magkaroon ng uh, another way of teaching that particular lesson. While external assessment provide information about mathematics programs to state and local agencies, funding bodies, policy makers, and the public, that information can be used either to hold program managers accountable or to monitor the program's level of performance. So, syempre, kung external assessment naman, ito naman yung nangyayari sa labas ng, ng school o sa labas ng classroom. Pero ang basis pa rin nila dito ay ang uh, internal assessment. Ano ba ang nangyari doon sa internal assessment? Baka mamaya hindi man pala talaga kaya pa ng bata. Like for example, ang grade 7, hindi pa talaga kaya ang uh, statistics. Kaya aalisin natin ang statistics sa grade 7. Pero kung kaya naman na nila o, o mas nadadalian sila, so pwede natin dagdagan. So something like that, yung, yung external assessment. That information can be used either to hold program managers accountable or to monitor the program's level of performance. These assessments are used primarily by people outside the immediate school community. Although internal assessments are perhaps more obviously and directly connected with the improvement of mathematics learning than external assessment, both type of assessment should be advanced mathematics education. So, parehas lang sila. Ano? Hindi po pwedeng mayroong mawala dahil ang internal assessment at external assessment when it comes to the implementation of mathematics education are both important, both useful na para maka-improve doon sa mathematics, mathematics education. The principles for assessing mathematics learning. In this unit, Three educational principles based on content, learning, and equity are set forth to guide changes in mathematics assessment. Underlying these three principles is the fundamental premise that assessment makes sense only if it is harmony, if it is in harmony with the broad goals, goals of mathematics education reform. Ano ano ba yung tatlo na yon? The first one is the content principle. Assessment should reflect the mathematics that is most important for students to learn. Any assessment of, of mathematics learning should first and foremost be anchored in important mathematical content. It should reflect topics and applications that are critical to a full understanding of mathematics as it is used in today's world and students' later uh, lives. Whether in the workplace or in later studies, Assessments should reflect processes that are required for doing mathematics. Examples are reasoning, problem solving, communication, and connecting ideas. Consensus has been achieved within the discipline of mathematics and among organizations representing mathematics educators and teachers on what constitutes important mathematics. Although such consensus is a necessary starting point, it is important to obtain public acceptance of these ideas and to preserve local flexibility to determine how agreed-upon standards are reflected in assessments as well as in curriculum. Assessment makes sense only if it is in harmony with the broad goals of mathematics education reform. As uses of mathematics change over time, visions of school mathematics and assessment must evolve in consonant ways. No existing conception of important content should constitute an anchor preventing changes in assessment that are warranted by changing times. Thus, assessment development will acquire more significant collaboration between content and measurement experts that has been that has been characteristic in the past. The goal of the content principle is to ensure that assessments are based on well-reasoned conceptions of what mathematics students will need to lead fully informed lives. Only if the mathematics assessed 
is important can the mathematics be justified a significant and valuable for students to know and the assessment justifies a supportive of good instruction and a good use of educational resources. So, syempre, when it comes to mathematics education, napakahalaga ng uh, content. Lagi na, laging uh, inuuna yung content sa mathematics. Kaya nga, uh, ngayon, we, we are implementing the K-12 basic education curriculum. Simula sa kinder, meron ng mathematics. From grade 1 meron, uh, to grade 1, meron ng mathematics. At ginawa siyang spiral approach. We're in which the content of the mathematics in that particular grade level ay palalim ng palalim habang habang tumatagal mas lumalalim ano nagsisimula sa pinakamadali then the next one is the learning principle assessment should enhance mathematics learning and support good instructional practice although assessments can be undertaken for various purposes and used in many ways Proponents of standards-based assessment reform have argued for the use of assessments that contribute very directly to student learning. The rationale is the challenging students to be creative and to formulate and solve problems will not ring true if all students see our quizzes, tests, and examination that dwell on the routine knowledge and skills. Consciously or unconsciously, students use assessment they are given to determine what other, others consider to be significant. So, learning principle. Kasi minsan, uh, medyo na i ang mga teachers sa pagbibigay lang ng quiz, sa pagbibigay lang ng mga exams, sa pagbibigay lang ng mga test. Hindi dapat puro ganun lang ang ating assessment. Sometimes we have to be innovative in giving assessment to our students so that we'll be able to really assess, to really know whether our students are learning or not from the lessons that we are giving to them. Hindi po pwede na natapos ang buong quarter, puro quizzes lang ang assessment na ginawa mo. Sometimes you have to let them speak. Sometimes you have to let them perform. Sometimes you have to group them and let them produce outputs. Mga ganun, para ma-assess talaga natin kung sila ba ay natuto or hindi. There are many ways to accomplish the desired links between assessment and learning. Assessment tasks can be designed so that they are virtually indistinguishable from good learning tasks by attending to factors that are critical to good instructional design. So, such as motivation, opportunities to construct or extend knowledge, and opportunities to receive feedback and device work. Kasi, uh, sa quiz, wala, wala nang chance yung bata doon na, na mag-revise pa ng kanilang mga trabaho. Kung ipi, ipinasa niya yung quiz niya na yon, yun na yon. Kung ano yung makuha niya doon, yun na yon. Unlike in some performance tasks, pag nagbigay ng feedback si teacher, meron pang pwedeng i-revise itong si, si student. Meron pa siyang pwedeng gawing improvement when it comes to their performance. Kaya mas nai-improve ang kanyang skills, mas nai-improve ang kanyang knowledge, mas nagiging maganda yung kanyang uh, performance when it comes to mathematics education. Assessment and instruction can be combined either through seamlessly weaving the two kinds of activities together or by taking advantage of opportunities for assessment as instructional proceeds. Assessments can also be designed in ways that help communicate the goals of learning and the products of successful learning. In each of these approaches, the teacher's role is critical both for facilitating and mediating learning. So, napakahalaga ng role ni teacher kapag gusto mo talaga maging innovative ang iyong assessment sa mga estudyante mo kasi kailangan hands-on ka dyan. Hindi po pwede na nagpag-group activity ka, for example, may mga gamit ang mga estudyante mo na matatalim, uh, like scissors, uh, cutter, meron silang mga 
uh, papel na gugupitin, sometimes makakalat sa loob ng classroom yan. That is the reason why the role of a teacher is very critical here and crucial because you really have to be very hands-on at nakatingin ka sa mga estudyante mo para walang mangyaring hindi maganda. Okay? And then the last one is the equity principle. <coughs> Assessment should support every student's opportunity to learn important mathematics. Okay. The equity principle aims to ensure that assessments are designed to give every student a fair chance to demonstrate his or her best work and are used to provide every student with access to challenging mathematics. Baka kasi akala natin, uh, wala siyang alam sa mathematics, Pero nung in mo siya, magugulat ka na lang, mas mahusay pa pala siya dun sa first honor. Okay? That is the reason why we have to be equal. We have to give equal chances and opportunities to our students para makita talaga natin yung kanilang husay sa, sa mathematics education. Because there are some students na nagtatago lang, nahihiya lang ipakita yung kanilang tunay na galing. But if given a chance to prove themselves and to show their skills and knowledge in terms of mathematics, eh, maipapakita naman nila, magugulat pa tayo bilang mga teachers. Kaya, tayo bilang mga teachers dapat binibigyan natin ng importansya, binibigyan natin ng focus, binibigyan natin ng chance ang bawat isa sa ating mga estudyante dahil Naniniwala ako na lahat ng estudyante natin ay may itinatagong galing when it comes to mathematics, when it comes to uh, knowledge and skills. Equity also requires attention to how assessment results are used. Often assessments have been used inappropriately to filter students out of educational opportunity. They might be used instead to empower students, like to provide students the flexibility needed to their best work, to provide concrete examples of good work, so that students will know what to aim for in learning and to ele elevate the students and others' expectations of what can be achieved. Isa lang sa mga nakita kong problema uh, pagdating sa mathematics education, Yes, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga contest specifically in the uh, basic education in, with the Department of Education. We are having some contest competition when it comes to mathematics. Meron tayo ng mathematics quiz, meron tayo mathematics trail, then we have the Sudoku puzzle, the Rubik's Cube, and so on. We have the MTOP. Marami tayong mga... Uh, programs when it comes to mathematics na talaga namang uh, nagpa-participate ang mga students at ang mga schools. Pero, ang nakakasali lamang doon ay yung mga estudyante natin na mayroong gifted skills when it comes to mathematics. Sila yung pinakamagagaling na pinakamagagaling sa math, pinakamagagaling sa sa Sudoku Puzzle, pinakamagaling sa Rubik's Cube, sila yon. Pero nakukulang tayo ng programa when it comes to those who are not that good in terms of mathematics. Yes, tama na meron tayong program para sa mahuhusay, pero dapat meron din tayong programa na mailatag para dito sa mga estudyante natin na hindi ganun kahuhusay, baka raw pa yung kanilang skills, hindi pa na kukultivate masyado. So, dapat magkaroon tayo ng mga programs for those kind of students and that is equity, I guess. Hindi yung pag may evaluation sa school at uh, uh, may evaluation, for example, sa mathematics. O, uh, alamin, sino-sino dito ang mga non-numerates at sino dito ang mga numerates. Ibig sabihin ng non-numerates, hindi, hindi, hindi sanay magbilang, walang alam sa basic operations, sila yon Ang gagawin ng mga school, hindi na papapasukin itong mga non-numerates. Kaya, ano nangyayari? Ang evaluation, very good. Pero in reality, hindi siya very good dahil itinatago yung dapat na i-assess 
Okay? Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng problema na dumarating sa high school ang mga estudyante natin, hindi kabisado ang multiplication table. Hindi alam ang addition property, ang subtraction property. Dumarating ng college na hindi sanay mag-solve ng problems, uh, mathematical word problems. Dumarating sa college ng uh, hindi critical thinker. It is because itinatago natin yung mga dapat i-assess. Hindi dapat ganun, ano? Kung ganun ang maging assessment, then work for, for the result of the assessment. Hindi yung dadayain natin yung assessment of a particular program, specifically when it comes to mathematics education. Equity also requires that policies regarding use of assessment results make clear the school's obligations to educate students to the level of due content and performance standards. Mathematics is one of the disciplines that have an important role in life because without mathematics, we do not have uh, many things. Wala siguro tayong orasan, wala tayong supatan ng timbang, wala tayong supatan ng uh, volume, lahat yan, ano? All of those are uh, because of mathematics, then we do not have these architectural designs, wala tayong mga yan. Many everyday activities involve math. Mathematics is one of the supporting disciplines for other disciplines such as natural science and social science. The importance of mathematics makes these subjects are always taught in many educational institutions and it, at each grade level with a portion of the lesson hour is much more than other subjects. Pero talagang mga schools, mas malaki yung hours nila na ay binibigay sa mathematics no? kasi naniniwala sila na ang mathematics ay mahalaga at ito talaga ay parang prerequisite sa iba pang mga subjects okay? but as long as there are still many people who think that mathematics is nothing more than counting and playing with formulas and figures actually mathematics is taught as it trains learners to think and argue which not only sharpens the left brain functions, namely logical thinking, analytical, critical, detail, coherence, sequential, and systematic, but also holds right brain functions, such as alternative thinking, explorative and creative, as well as the ability to decide and to, be, to do optimi optimization. Totoo naman, ano, hindi lang left brain natin ang... Uh, nadidevelop kapag nag-aaral tayo ng mathematics. It is uh, also developing our right brain because nadidevelop din ng mathematics ang pagiging creative natin. Like for example, in geometry, di ba? Hindi lang naman yung paglalaro ng mga formulas ang kailangan mong pag-aralan. Kung hindi, kailangan mo rin pag-aralan ang mga properties existing between and among these figures. We have the plain figures and the solid figures. Through mathematics, learners can also be accustomed to working efficiently, always trying to find a way that is simpler and more concise. Ganun naman talaga tayo sa mathematics. Ano? Hindi natin uh, pinipilit ang mga estudyante natin na gumamit lang ng iisang uh, solution. Pwede silang mag-try ng iba't ibang klase ng solution for as long as they will be arriving at the same answer. And for as long as the solution is acceptable at hindi, uh, hindi siya masama. Dapat ang solution ay good. At ang mathematics actually is a form of science na pinapadali ang lahat ng mga bagay. Hindi pinapahirap ng mathematics ang buhay. The, the main function of mathematics is to simplify the work of uh, human and as well as careful and not careless. Yan. Sa mathematics, di ba, natitrain ang mga estudyante natin na maging careful para ma-apply nila rin sa tunay na buhay nila. Because in mathematics, kapag nagkamali ka lang ng isang sign, ng isang symbol, then mamamali ka na uh, sa sagot. Kaya ganun din tayo sa buhay. You know? We have to be very careful. Yes, we give allowance to mistakes, but make sure that we are learning from all those mistakes. Tight in the argument and have the ability to work together. 
So it has the ability to meet the challenges of globalization as well as the rapid development of science and technology today and the future. We move on, so those are the three principles. We have the, the first one is the content principle, the second one is the learning principle, and the third one is the equity principle. Development of teaching material. It is important to develop teaching materials through a research approach as it can produce viable product that can be used and is completely in accordance with the requirements. Research development in the field of education is a type of research that aims to produce products for the sake of learning that begins with the needs analysis followed by the development of the product, then the product is evaluated. Uh, one of the teaching material na hinangaan ko was developed in Singapore. Ito yung tinawag nilang Algedisc. Algedisc siya, ginagamit in teaching and learning algebra. Meron yung sinlaki lang ng 10 peso coin yun. Ano? Gumupit-gupit sila ng mga ganon para may nahahawakan at may, may namamanipulate yung mga students in solving algebraic equation. So, nung nakita ko papaano kinagamit yung Algebis, maganda nga. Most especially kung ang mga estudyante natin ay nasa high school. Uh, these uh, students, manipulative yan. Mas gusto nila yung meron silang nahahawakan, meron silang mas nakikita na abs, uh, na concrete para mas matuto sila. Then, it concludes with the revised product and product development dissemination. Although po 2002, Development is the process of translating specifications into physical form by Seals Ritchie in 1994. A set of teaching materials is arranged in systematic material used by the teacher so that it creates the learning environment and atmosphere that allows the learners to, le to learn. Diba ganun naman talaga tayo sa math? Uh, kung magtuturo ka ng solid figures, dapat may dala kang solid figures. Kung magtuturo ka ng measurement, dapat meron kang mga measurement device and equipment. Kung magtuturo ka ng volume, dapat meron kang mga solids na pwede mong malagyan ng, ng liquids or solids. Mga ganon. Mahalaga yung meron kang visual uh, aids. Yan, mga learning materials. And take note that you as a teacher is the main uh, teaching material in the teaching and learning process. Kaya dapat ay presentable ka din. Dapat ay punong-puno ka din ng kaalaman na pwede mong ma-share sa mga estudyante mo. Hindi po pwede na dinaan mo na lang sa ganda ng PowerPoint presentation. Hindi po pwede na dinaan mo na lang sa kagandahan mo o sa kapugian mo yung pagtuturo. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. In Education Guideline published by Ministry of Education 2006, it explains that good teaching materials must meet some components as follows. Number one, learning guidelines. So, meron tayong mga learning guidelines. No? Uh, hindi po pwede na meron kang masasagasaan sa paggamit ng iyong mga uh, learning materials or teaching materials. Then, kailangan mo rin uh, ma-meet yung competencies to be achieved. Baka mamaya ang tinuturo mo algebra, eh kung ano-ano yung teaching material na ginagamit mo. The content of learning materials, uh, very, very, tawag dito, napaka, yung issue natin ngayon sa DepEd, yung mga lumalabas na modules, yung galing pa daw yon sa sa isang Catholic school, parang gano'n, ano, mag-ingat tayo sa paglalabas ng content ng mag-ingat tayo sa paggawa ng content ng ating mga learning materials dahil uh, printed 'yan, nakikita at mananatili habang buhay sa sa circulation. So we have to be very careful in publishing and giving or delivering or making our learning materials. Supporting information. Yeah. So, dapat meron din tayo mga supporting information. Then, the exercises, of course, para 
hindi lang puro si teacher, no? Kailangan meron ka rin mga ginagawang exercises for your students because uh, through that, mas natututo ang mga estudyante natin. Then we have work instructions in the form of worksheets. Then we have the evaluation and a response or track back to the evaluation results. Hindi porke nakapag-evaluate ka na, itapos na. Hindi ganun, ano? Dapat meron ka pang uh, monitoring doon sa evaluation na ginawa mo. So, all those are uh, the components ng mga good teaching materials na dapat nating mamit. Further, the development of teaching materials is a systematic process of identifying, developing, and evaluating the content and instructional strategies aimed at achieving the goal of effective and efficient learning by Banati 1991. Dick and Carey 1990 saw the development of materials or ingredients as one component of a learning system which cannot be separated from other learning components. Sabi nila, hindi daw talaga pwedeng uh, wala ka man lang learning materials or teaching materials. Uh, kakambal yan ng, ng pagkatuto. Okay? Materials development as a process is the implementation of the appreciation of the curriculum designing learning activities, the application of learning theory, and using the objects developed so that it can produce learning material that is ready to be used for teaching and learning. The objectives of the development of teaching materials, here they are. One, prepare a learning activity in a variety of circumstances which can continue optimally. Totoo naman yan, ano? Kailangan you prepare a learning activity na iba-iba. Depende sa, sa pangyayari. Hindi porke ang hawak mo ay math 7 sa limang subjects. Isang learning activity lang ang hiyahanda mo. Hindi. You have to consider the needs of your students. You have to consider their abilities because not all students are of the same level when it comes to mathematics. Kaya ang learning material mo dyan dapat o ang learning activity mo dyan dapat, iba-iba din para makater mo lahat ng individual differences ng iyong mga estudyante. The number two, increase the motivation of teachers in the management of teaching and learning activities in the classroom. Kasi tayo, pag gumagawa tayo ng uh, teaching materials, para bang mas motivate tayo na magturo, mas motivate tayo na mas galingan natin sa loob ng klase. Ganun yun, ano? Then the last one is to prepare the continuity of learning activities with new contents, new way of displaying the new contents, and new teaching strategies. Para hindi naman magsawa yung mga estudyante natin, dapat lagi sa ating may bago. Diba? Lagi tayo may pasabog kung papasok tayo sa classroom. Hindi yung paulit-ulit na lang. Wala nang bago. Then your students might get bored inside your classroom. Baka hindi ka na-attenda ng mga estudyante mo yan. And then, to produce good teaching materials, one should also note the development steps. The steps of this development can observe the principle of the development of instructional materials in general, namely needs analysis, the purpose of the analysis, and analysis of the material. <coughs> All right. Here's your task now. I will randomly assign you topics. Actually, uh, gamitin nyo na lang yung topic na napili ninyo in mathematics. And your task is to make an original teaching material in any form, whether traditional or modern yan, as if you will be teaching junior high school students with a particular topic. You have to submit six pictures, two pictures of the materials, two pictures while you are doing it, and another two pictures of the finished product. Sasubmit nyo pictures lang, no? Anim na pictures. Submission will be through our Facebook group, our Messenger group. Comment down your pictures with captions on my post. Uh, teaching material making. Ayan, maglalagay ako ng post kung na ganyan. Deadline will be on or before midnight of our next meeting. And the criteria for grading your output will be as follows. <coughs> Appropriateness and correctness, 40%. 
physical appearance is 30%, resourcefulness 20%, and timeliness 10%, a total of 100%. Note, you just have to make instructional materials intended for the presentation of topic. Presentation lang, hindi na yung for assignment, for motivation, presentation of topic lang, meaning content lang ang laman nun. You may utilize the K-12 mathematics curriculum as your reference. <coughs> Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions with regards to what we discussed today, please feel free to send a question in our group chat and I will be very much welcome to answer all of those. Keep safe everyone and hope to see you soon.